all right guys uh Fulu coming to you with another video i'm just um really i just decided not really to pay homage well i guess you can say pay homage as well as just give my opinion on a certain musical artist that really influenced me in more ways than one and when i say in more ways than one i mean in many ways in terms of me becoming a sneakerhead in terms of even my dress style you know i'm, I'm gonna even go that far to say that even um and also just frame of mind when living in you know the west but I want to say basically that everybody knows Wu Tang Clan. You know, everybody knows that Wu Tang is is basically one of the biggest, most legendary hip hop groups that has ever been in the music industry. They're on par with groups like N.W.A. They're on par with groups bef that came before them like Public Enemy. They're on par with groups such as the Ghetto Boys. You can put Wu-Tang Clan with these people. Now, the reason why I say what I'm about to say is because of the simple fact I just you know, with music, as I said, there's the difference between hearing the music and just dancing to the beat or listening to the music and actually just dissecting the lyrics in which you're listening to. Studying what's being said on those on, on those songs, you know. Certain artists fall into that category in which you study what is being said on those songs. Of course, you know, I'm going to say Nipsey Hussle falls into that category. Sandman the Goose, you know, may God have mercy on both of them. May God be pleased with both of them. Scarface falls into that category. Jay-Z falls into that category. AZ falls into that category. And the guy I'm about to talk about falls into that category as well. Raekwon. Now, and, you know, amongst my friends and amongst, like, people who who know hip-hop, they always ask me, okay, well, who who do you say is the best Wu-Tang Clan member? Like, who, who do you choose as your favorite Wu-Tang person? And I tell them, you know, man, if I had to choose, you know, a, a guy, I'm choosing Raekwon. I'm choosing the chef. I'm choosing Lex Diamonds. And people will ask me, well, why do you choose Raekwon? I'm going to give my reasons why I choose Raekwon. Because, don't, I mean, with Wu-Tang Clan, there really wasn't any weak weak link all the members catered to certain demographics all of them did all of them had maybe some some were maybe more underground type some were maybe more mainstream type but then you had the one who was balanced who could do both and that one was Raekwon now listen, one of the reasons why I like Raekwon is he was such a versatile artist. He was such an artist in which he can, he can rap about anything. He can rap about that fly stuff. He can rhyme about that grimy street stuff. He can rhyme about just, just for the sport of rhyming, just for the, the lyricism. He can do that too. What I most like him for though was the storytelling. Out of all the groups, out of all the artists of um, 
the Wu Tang Clan, Raekwon was is probably the best storyteller. I have to say, hands down, the way he talked about things, it's just like man, it puts you right there. When it comes to second best storyteller, I, I guess you can say Ghostface, but that's because him and Raekwon are so close. You know, so that's why I have to ch Now he, he he just when he told stories he just put you in that position. And he just had again his rhyming skill in telling stories was just second to none. That's the whole thing about Raekwon. It was just he just knew how to rap, bro. But his his flow the thing is about Raekwon, bro, you can't really compare his flow to anybody. He just has different lingos and just different rhyme patterns that if you don't really listen, you're going to miss some things. And that's, the, and, and that's another thing about him in regards to his storytelling. Maybe some of them are real stories. Maybe some of them are kind of symbi symbo symbolic stories, right? But I'll give you an example of Raekwon's storytelling. He he did a story. He did a um a story about Osama bin Laden. He did a track about Osama bin Laden, telling his whole story, how he came to be, right? That track was fire. I'm like, man, this guy is really nice. I kid you not. I really mess with that about him. Now, another thing that I like about Raekwon, to, to, to take it a step further into his versatility, the, the, the Wu-Tang members overall, they, they really couldn't do what he does. Like, for example, a master killer couldn't get on a trap with, like, a pop star. The only other person who probably could do this is, again, Ghostface. But, again, Ghostface is the closest person to Raekwon. So, of course, some of that is going to rub off on Ghostface. But, for example, you couldn't put... Uh, like uh inspect the deck on a track with like say a a asap rocky or a kid Cudi or you you can't do that but raekwon can do that and sound right that's the thing about raekwon you can put raekwon on a track with a rick ross you can put raekwon a black thought you can put raekwon on a track with a to live quali and he's not going to sound out of place you can put raekwon on a track with an asap rocky and he's going to sound like he doesn't belong on the track. That's the one thing I like about Raekwon. Another thing is too, he has different genres about him in regards to his rapping. He can get on a hardcore street track, but then maybe you know, mess around, be on a dance hall track. That's how he, he likes to do it. He likes to keep things fresh. And so that's why I respect him so much. Now, another thing too about Raekwon, I'm not gonna lie, he just had a presence about him that I really mess with. And I think the reason why I mess with it is because it was authentic. It was not forced. It was just something that was real chill. And that's what I like about him, okay? For example, you knew Raekwon, I mean, Raekwon was quiet, but he was loud at the same time, right? For example, he was not the type to brag about all the street stuff he did and all the stuff he saw and all the things that he experienced on the street. That was never Raekwon's MO, right? But you knew presence that he saw things, he did things, he experienced things in the street, on the street level. You knew that. Or you know this by the, the fact that he's doing, the, the fact of 
how he carries himself and whatnot. And just when you listen to an interview with him, you know? And then another thing about Raekwon that I really messed with in terms of uh, his, his, like, his aura about him is, you know, he's a fellow Muslim, alhamdulillah. And it's, it's just, you always hear him say, inshallah, and I like that about him too. And he'll, he'll break down spirituality and things like that. And so this is another thing why I mess with Raekwon, bro. Off top. Now, another reason why I think Raekwon is the best is... I, I'm not going to even front to you, man. I'm not going to even like, sit here and try to cap. Now, granted... The, the man... The clothes don't make the man. Everything and knows that clothes do not make a man in fact if you hide behind clothes that means that you're just kind of like hiding behind something else that's lacking inside of you that's what that means when it comes to clothes right so this is one thing i like about Raekwon. okay he didn't hide behind his clothes but he still was a fly like no homo he still fly i it, now, if I sit here and cap and say that, nah, you know, Raekwon did not influence my, my dressing, then I would be lying, okay? Now, granted, in South Central LA, you know, where especially in my neck of the woods, the style was like Dickies, Chucks, flannel shirts, white teens, S caps, NY caps. Um, Chuck Taylors, Adidas, fresh pair of Air Force Ones, Dodger jerseys. But while I did have those things, I also had the polo rugby's, the Adidas track jackets, the um. The crazy color Air Force Ones. But to be honest, I'm not even into Air Force Ones anymore, bro. Like, it, like the Air Force Ones in the past were, like, more chill. But the ones they're making now, man, they're, like, clunky, bro. Like, for me, the Air Force One is the heavy. It's a heavy shoe. It's real heavy, man. I, I don't really like it. I used to like it, but not anymore. So, another thing too is the fashion sense, you know. And uh, and here's a here's the thing too about Raekwon that I want to say. And and this is not by any means. I'm not trying to just like ride the dude's manioka. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just just sharing like how this fool like impacted me really because i'm gonna be honest with you like ogs or folks from around the hood you know real real rappers the revolutionaries as well that i often name in some videos have more impact in have more impact on me than any conscious Negro will have. You know, to be honest, none, none of the conscious Negroes had any impact on me. The only impact that they had on me was to teach me what not to do or teach me what not to be. Teach me how, teach me not to um, be my, uh, the, a my way or the highway type nigga in that 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 this is the only right way that's what they taught me not to do okay now when it comes to uh raekwon it's just his presence you know he's a husky nigga like Raekwon's a husky old nigga, 
but you can tell he wears that huskiness with like with with I guess you can say with assurance now I'm not promoting what these feminists are promoting for example that a lot of these feminists uh a lot of these feminists will say that you know a woman is it's okay to be morbidly obese it's okay you know i mean as a matter of fact and this is crazy i don't know why they even do this but they still do it i swear to god they still do it right now to this day wallahi to allah la ilaha illahu um they still have magazines for example by women's health cosmopolitan in which they will have these big women, fat women post nude and they will say that, you know, you shouldn't body sham them or anything like that. But the crazy thing is these same uh, fat women who post nude and stuff think that they're entitled to a nigga who's a six foot chiseled six pack nigga and will not even go for a, a man who um, is around their weight. But that's another video in itself. I'm not about to go into that. But that's what I like about Raekwon. But I mean, the only re I mean, obviously, the, the main reason um, he's this weight is, I mean, the nigga's eating good. I mean, I mean, even if you look at his Instagram, nigga got new uh, Rolls Royce Phantom truck and all of that. So that's, I mean, that's one of the obvious reasons. So, But I'm just saying that because he wears it proudly. You know what I mean? Like, he wears that, like, he, he's a short of himself. And so I like that kind of, like, husky, like, swag. You know, uh, a couple of rappers have that. Um, Ab Liva from Major Figures, he has that. He's, like, six foot nine. That nigga's tall. That nigga's dumb tall. And that's another rapper who slept on. But, um, anyhow... The last thing I want to say about Raekwon, it's just his mind going into making albums is just one thing that I mess with. This is one thing that I really can mess with and get down with, is the mindset that he went into making Built for Cuban Links. He was really on some Tony Sosa, Scarface, Al Pacino, Tony Montana type stuff. Little, little that is known is that he made that album. He recorded most of it in Miami. He was in Miami when he made Built for Cuban Links Volume 1. He didn't record, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure he did some of it in New York, but a majority of the album was in Miami. He recorded it in Miami and he said he just wanted to have that feeling and just wanted to be around where all that Cuban Links stuff was happening. And what where was all where where was all the drugs coming in from? Miami. Who was mostly in Miami and who still is mostly in Miami right now? The Colombians and the like thereof who were involved in that trade he also recorded part of the album in Barbados as well but he said that things went sour there you know for some reason they didn't really have you know good energy in Barbados so he decided that you know Barbados wasn't for him and he, he ceased recording in Barbados right so just for him to do that, that that album in those places lets you know that he was really after a certain type of um, piece of work in making that album. You know, he was really trying to make art. And I will say that I, like with, when it comes to top 10 albums, Built for Human Links, the first one, is up there, man. But you know, even the second one, if the thing is, if I have to pick one Cuban links, I'm going to pick the first one, but the second one deserves to be there too, you know, 
And so, you know, these are the reasons why I really rock with Raekwon. And I still rock with Raekwon today. Now, of course, within Wu-Tang Clan, there is some riff. And I think, uh, uh, you know, when you get a... Listen. When you get around a lot of people and there's a lot of money involved, there is going to be riffs. Okay? That's just... That's just a, a rule of thumb. Unless you're really, really solid. And unless you guys really, really have found a way to just not have these riffs. Okay? But there's going to be riffs. I mean, it happened with state property. It happened with everybody. There's always going to be riffs. But hopefully they can come to the table and solve the riffs and make something great. You know, produce something great. But all I got to say, bro, is that, you know, yeah, shout out to Ray Kwan. Really shout out to him. And last but not least, I want to say this about Ray Kwan too. And inshallah, we get this. We get this track, inshallah. Inshallah, we get this. But there's a snippet of him doing a track with Nipsey Hussle. Now imagine how that will sound. And I pray to Allah we get that. Because I would like to hear how Nipsey is on the track with him. And that just goes to show you who he reached out to and created relationships with. And yeah, you can catch even... And as a matter of fact, you see the cover of the video. You know, Raekwon rocking the Crenshaw stuff. But anyhow, man... Leave your thoughts and leave your comments. Let me know who you thought or who you think is the best Wu-Tang member. You know, for me, if I had to choose an order of Wu-Tang members, it, top three. Top three, I'm going with Raekwon first. But I, I don't really think Kappa Dom was really in Wu-Tang. But if I had to choose, he, I mean, he was always with them. I would choose him, number two, and then three, Ghostface. But look, you guys, you, you guys leave your thoughts and let me know what y'all think, man. Fool is signing out. Like and subscribe. If you feel like you want to share the video, share the video too, man. You know what I mean? We're we're at like half a that. We're we're like halfway away from a thousand, so we can try to push for that. And that's the goal at the end of the day. But fool is signing out. Jaramu.